What's up guys, it's your boy Darskin, and today we I want to talk to you guys about um, Deanne's banner. Now, not about Deanne specifically, but if you guys haven't noticed or realized, her banner leaves on the 21st. Now, I know you're probably asking yourself, well, Darkskin, why does that matter? I'm glad you asked. Um, usually, well, almost every banner that has came out as of recency, I guess, has been out for two weeks. And the reason why is because they've been staggering the banner. So one banner will be out for one week with the last banner. And then once the next banner comes out, the old banner leaves. So the new banner becomes the old banner. Long story short, one banner is out for two weeks. That's what they've done. Well, that's not the case with Deanne. Deanne is only going to be out for a week. Now, the reason why this is something to talk about is because Escanor which is the old banner, is also leaving in two days. So both of these banners are leaving. Now, I know somebody's going to be like, well, Darskin, obviously, we're getting the clap, bro. What do you, what's the problem? The thing is, the collab is going to be here for two weeks. So obviously, we get the collab banner. Cool, got you. But what banner would we possibly be getting with the collab? Well, like week two collab. Um... I had someone talk to, well, I, I think it was stream. Somebody was talking to me and someone said, hey, Dark Skin, uh, what banner do you think we're going to be getting with the um, with the collab? And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, well, you know, the end's leaving and collab's going to be out two weeks. He was like, I think we are going to be getting Esterosa. And I was like, why do you think him specifically? If you guys don't know, um, Esterosa, super amazing unit, number one. Number two... Uh, Esterosa is really, really good when it comes to these type of bosses, right? When it comes to these type of bosses, he's just really good because, um, of how his counter works. His counter is not based off of anybody else's damage or anything like that. His counter is based off of his attack stat, which, all you gotta do is throw an attack defense on that man, and he's gonna be dishing out some dumb damage, not to mention he has... A light, he has really good lifesteal, right? 18% on top of he can get lifesteal from Meliodas or Bond. So his lifesteal can potentially become, you know, 30% with um, the right sub character. So with that being the case, um, now he just becomes this unit that it's free damage, basically. Literally, it's just free, free damage. He sits there and he counters over and over and over and... Like, he's just really good when it comes to these type of bosses. Now, if you guys don't know, we are getting a Colossal Titan boss, right? With the Colossal Titan boss coming out, um, which I'm I'm almost certain the Colossal Titan is blue. I, I did a video on it, which I, I'm going to try to find this video, man. I, I literally, I, I forgot when I did it, but I did a video on it. And um, I'm almost positive the boss is blue. Let me go ahead and look real quick. Yeah, the boss is blue. So, Asterosa being green... He might come out. He might come out that second week of um, the Attack on Titan collab. It would suck if he did. Um, I mean, I told people to skip. So, I mean, if he does, I mean, hey. Um, Y'all ain't want to listen to me. But going over what he does, he's so good. He's a, such a good unit. I'm almost certain this is Nagato's favorite unit um, in Grand Cross. Um, anyways, inflicts charge. 200 300 500 percent charge ignores defense which is uh really good and uh moving on to a second card assumes a stench which taunts enemies for one turn and flicks damage equal to 240 percent when attacked now this is for the entire turn so if you attack six times he's going to counter six times obviously you can only attack three times total but i'm just saying um he he holds the taunt and counter for the entire turn i uh, rank two Taunts for one turn, 360% damage, and then at rank three, um, it's taunt for three for two turns and does 600% damage. Think of this as an attack card. He is the highest attack percent card in the game. If you guys don't know, the highest attack card in the game is 240, 360, 600, which he does. So, um, yeah, he, he it definitely dishes out dumb damage. Moving on to his ultimate, his ultimate is also a counter. Once you get your ultimate, if you press your ultimate, he won't do anything. It'll switch to the enemy's turn. 
after your turn's over. And if they try to do any attack, instead of them attacking, it cancels their turn. Your Esterosa ults, and then it's your turn. So, um, yeah, super good. Now, be wary that um, if you ult and they don't attack, your ult just goes away. So, you got to understand it's a double-edged sword. You kind of got to use your ult as a zoning tool more so than just damage because if, if the enemy is smart, they will just save their attacks for the turn after. Now, keep in mind, this is a good way to, like, um, ensure that you get, like, an, say you rush ult with King uh, and then you use Esterosa ult or something like that, right? They can no longer take that ult away or anything like that because they cannot attack. So just things like that, you know, it's, it's really good for setup and stuff like that. Um, not to mention his passive removes debuffs and grants debuff immunity for two turns on allies that assume stance for two turns. Does not apply to ultimate. Yeah, so there's that. Then his commandment, um, after allies and enemies receive damage, apply a debuff that decreases attack related stats of the attacker by 20% for three turns. Now, if he taunts and then attacks, he does not get that, that um, you know, that debuff because he has debuff immunity from his passive. That's what makes him so good. He kind of counters him. He kind of stops himself from hindering himself, so to speak. Um, so yeah, if you taunt and then you attack, you will not get the debuff from your commandment, which is super nice. Now, obviously, if Esterosa was to come out, it would be a, it should be a double banner, which we would get red Esterosa. 220% um, attack. Um, on global, He you do not disable recovery skills. On his first card, it'll just be a raw damage. His rank two will disable cover skills for one turn, and then this one will just be the same thing. Um, this is JP, so that's why it says like that because he did get buffed. But uh, for right now, this is just damage, and then these two are the recovery disables. Now, moving second, moving on, uh, uh, inflicts an extinction damage 160, 240, 400 to one enemy. Extinction damage increases damage dealt by 20% per debuff on the target. So it's a little bit better than the card King has. Um, if we go look at King's card, I forgot what the name of it was, but um, Ruin. Ruin increases damage dealt by 30% per debuff on the target, but it removes the debuff. So it does 10% increased damage, but it removes the debuff. With him, it does not remove it, but it's 10% less damage. So there's that. Same ultimate as the green Esterosa. Uh, same commandment as well, but it's passive increases attack by 10% per debuff on hero So this guy is adamant about getting debuffs on people So if someone attacks they get a debuff if he hits them with this card they get a debuff So that's at least two so uh, he had you know now this is um debuffs on himself, which he cannot uh, he can't cleanse this so if he attacks he will get You know a stack of his passive um, but yeah, he's, he's just not super good. Honestly, he's, he's not that good. Green Esteros is way better. Now, um, speaking of units that could come, a lot of people have been talking about Derriere coming to the game um, as far as, you know, very soon. I highly doubt she would come before Esterosa. Granted, it's global. They could drop anything. We have no clue what they, what they can do, right? They can do whatever they want. But um, Green Derriere is actually not that bad of a unit. Um, 120 depletes old gauge, 300 depletes old gauge, 450 depletes old gauge on her first card. Second card uh, inflicts 150 AOE, 180 AOE fills her old gauge, and then 300 AOE fills her old gauge by two. Her ultimate has amplify 630. Her passive um, ultimate move gauge will not fill when enemies move skills, right? And apparently it's only enemies, right? So when enemies move skills, they can't get old gauge. Then her passive decreases the damage dealt by ranged attacks of all of allies and enemies by 35%. Ranged attacks being attacks where you don't go up and, you know, give them the hands. Um, green Derriere, pretty good. Uh, red Derriere, obviously, I've talked about her a lot. 240, 360, 600, highest attack card in the game, percents wise. Base stats by 20 for two turns. Base stats by 30 for two turns, evades. And then base stats by 50 for three turns, evades. Moving on, ultimate has amplify, obviously. Now, her commandment is obviously the same, but her passive increases attack by 10% when the hero uses a skill. The buff goes away when no skills are used, limited to 10 times. She can get 10 buffs from this, and then she can get 3 buffs from this. Up to 4 buffs if she gets evade. So, up to 14 buffs. So, that amplify is going to be slapping, bro. 
So, um, I mean, there's that. I mean, granted, like I said, I highly doubt Derriere is going to be the one to come soon, especially over Esterosa. But Esterosa could definitely come with that next, um, the next week. Uh, I mean, like I said, we don't know who's going to be coming to the game. Honestly, it could be anybody. Could be Fat Red King. Could they could bring anybody? Um, but I mean, we don't know. So I just wanted to make a video about that. Talk to you guys about that. Let you guys know that there could be a good unit coming that next week of the update. Um, but anyways, that's going to be it for this video. Be sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Comment down below. Tell me what you guys did in the comment section. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.